Welcome back from the break, ladies and gentlemen. That was our first match of the day. You saw it there. San Francisco getting work done versus Boston. Yep. But X, we got a match coming up next. And this is going to be a banger. Yeah, if you would have said a month ago that I'm really looking forward to Houston and Paris, I'd have your temperature checked because you've come down with something. But this actually means a whole lot for both of these teams. You see our stage three standings here. It's been a very good stage for both the Paris Eternal and the Houston Outlaws. And this one just means everything for Paris for the stage to get in the stage finals. They've made some revamping. Outlaws look like a whole new team. That's what's everything. Everything is riding on the Houston Outlaws right now because they have saved their season. Hex last week with their performance. They're finally getting wins on the board. Now not only are they in the run for the playoffs of the stage, they could be in the run for the league this season playoffs. Yeah, you see the cutoff there. There's teams now in the play-in tournament are 12 through 7 seeds that only have 7 wins. Houston's sitting at 5 there, and they've looked really good. They finally found their style. They found what works for them. They found the lineup that works for them. And mostly it's just shooting people. It's just these damage dealers. It's so good. But the season schedule is super important because the Outlaws probably need seven, eight wins. I look at the season schedule, I can find you seven or eight wins here. Are we talking Moneyball here now? You're looking at the stats. You're getting into the <laughs> yep. in-depth into it. Analytics. Like, all we need is runs and wins and points, Hex, and that's how we get them. But they've got the Eternal twice before the end of the season. They're they're dodging all of the elite teams, the ones that are sitting at the top. Yeah, so now you just start looking at what are the possible losses. Like, if they beat Eternal today, then you have to have that double win because they play Eternal in Stage 4 as well. Gladiators is going to be a tough one. Philly always plays to their opponents that they play uh, up or down to. Atlanta could be tough. London could be tough. Look, it's not a cakewalk, but if you just had a schedule to choose from to try to get in the season, I think Houston's pretty happy with the remaining games they have. Absolutely. Out of the top four right now that are in the running, I would rather play the Gladiators than the other three. Yeah. So, I mean, Beautiful. if you're Houston right now, you're like, okay, dodge that bullet. Yeah. And uh, now let's just buckle down. Some confidence. They're yeah. finally starting to get some confidence. If you look at the schedule, and the thing missing is the big three there. Like, okay, no Vancouver, no um, San Francisco, and no New York. So those are guaranteed L's for almost every team in the league, except, I guess, San Francisco. If you're Houston, you're able to beat them. But San Francisco has come back very angry. But I think Houston fans should have a lot of hope if you just look at the schedule going forward. Yeah, they got great fans, too. Uh, it was a Dallas event, the Dallas homestand. Loads of Houston fans, yeah, too. Yeah, it was about 50-50. Yeah, it was so cool, that turnout. Guys, be sure to check out the Atlanta homestand that's going to be coming up here in Stage 3. So if you haven't got your tickets, if you're in the area, be sure to check it out. But let's take a look at Paris and their standings, their schedule right now, because this is also important as far as Paris are concerned. They're a team that have started the comeback as well. Yeah, they've already got three wins on the stage, and of course you want to make stage playoffs, get confidence, get some Skrilla as well. Boston is, it looks like a very beatable team right now. Outlaws, you know, they have to play them twice. Uh, Dynasty, you know, they've been all over the place yeah. as well. It's it's once you get past the big three that we have in the Overwatch League in 2019, everyone seems beatable once you start getting four, five, six. We've been trying to lock in who's the fourth, fifth, sixth best team, and it's been a different team every week. Exactly. And, you know, the, there wasn't really, oh, this is actually the map win rate here for the win rate in Stage 1 for the Paris Eternal, 32%. Now into Stage 3 with yep. this roster, 63. They made a lot of changes here. They got new Zarya player in there. Gray has been playing very, very well. Uh, and Cruz with Gray has been playing better too. Cruz still goes for very aggressive plays. Playmaking Lucio, BC. the changes they made, you can't argue with the numbers. Their win rate has skyrocketed. Absolutely not. For a second, though, when I, when I was like, oh, this graphic is coming up, I thought, Houston, why are we looking at Houston? I mean, 0 and 7 versus, obviously, anything is better than 0. Right. Uh, Houston are definitely a team <laughs> right now. It's like, no, 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 we're talking about Paris. We're talking about Paris. I mean, Paris, they're succeeding in turning it around, and they have the roster to dig into. They have the talent to dig into. So if there is a meta change that comes up where you have to actually start working the trace or the damage dealers the way that Houston are, mm -hmm. you still got the depth in the, in the roster of Shadowburn and soon. It's just that they didn't fit this meta. Paris decided Danya was the way to go. Yeah, and who knows what the things look like when we enter into stage four. Who knows, patches, whatever comes down their way. Paris would like to play 3-3 most of the time, but they do have the horses to run on almost any damage cop. Yeah, so hopefully they get out of the stable. Let's get them onto the stage. Paris Eternal. A much more confident team now in stage three as they've been able to pick up victories. Nico just always looks upset and ready to play, but he will lead the team out of the tunnel. Cruz there at the end, and Gray has been putting in work on the Zenyatta. The last second Widow clutches as well, so if the, you know, if 
the compositions change, they do have the guys who can run it here. And this Paris team, all focused on stage three playoffs right now, while win here today almost locks it up for them. Now, let's get their opponents out onto the stage. Big welcome for the Houston Outlaws. And almost always tell Houston's coming out by the screams of the crowd in the front row, as always. Sombra Ace Dante will lead the charge. A much happier Linkser who gets to play Widowmaker on a lot of these compositions. They are playing like a brand new team. They are capable. They've always had it, the mechanical skill in Linkser. You've always got the damage dealers on here. It's just a matter of finally going the Chung Du way. They're like, no, no, we need to play it our way. Yes, this is the meta that everybody else in the league is playing apart from Chung Du. Right. But now they've finally gone ahead, they've bitten the bullet, and it turns out the bullet, it was a chocolate bullet. Heck. Yeah. It was a really good bullet. Yeah, I mean, Monty had called out this team in specific, but everybody was saying, like, if you're not good at running 3-3, just stop. And we needed a stage or two to figure out which teams were truly abysmal at it. Houston happened to be one of them, and now they found their style, and a lot of other teams are going the same way. And it's worked out really well. These two, it's going to be a battle. Rockus is playing some of the best Overwatch he's played over the last several weeks. And I mean, we're looking at both Zenyatas here, but it's gonna be the Sombra battle that Rockus has been so good at, avoiding Sombra EMPs, getting the Transcendence out, and actually doing a lot of damage here too. The numbers don't suss it out, but when you start so low in the rankings, it's gonna take you a couple games to get those numbers back up. And that's the thing, and Gray, you know, also just coming into it, has he's had a bit of an easier time, let's say. Didn't have to go through the dark days of uh, goose eggs, no. no wins, just getting beaten up on. Oh, sorry, the way that Rockus has. So I mean, as far as Rox is concerned right now, it seems like he is hitting the comfort zone. I mean, he certainly is dominant in the hair game. I, th there's nobody that comes close to Rox. He's looking extra wild today. Perhaps uh, Matt stole some of his styling product there. Best hair in the league in the Houston Outlaws here. Let's take a look at what maps we will be playing on between Paris and Houston. This is our map set presented by Toyota. And these are not great maps for Houston statistically, but... When he started the year so rough, you're going to have a lot of zeros in the win columns. Oasis is a map that I really am interested to see what Houston wants to run on. Last time we saw them on Oasis, it seemed like they didn't really even have a plan when we got to City Center of how they were going to get kills. So I think you can run a Fara on almost all of these Oasis maps. Oasis was once the home of Fara. Everybody ran it on that map. So we'll see what compositions teams want to come out in here. Now, on, on this particular point, you can run a lot of 3-3. It's very successful. You can, but it doesn't look like we're going to get our Farah here, Hex. Not meant to be, even though Jake is, in fact, on the server as a starting six member. It is going to be Somber Goats for Houston Outlaws versus Standard Goats with Anna for Paris Eternal. Goats, of course, being the name of 3-3 if you're newish to Overwatch, popularized by a team called Goats. That's what everyone calls it, all its variations of the 3-3. That's really a terrible start. You don't want to lose your Zarya early. Links are back in spawn, and the rest of his team will follow him back. They're a completely lost fight. Paris will take first control. Oh, look at that Mooba. That's a rude awakening, and that's a great stagger as far as the Paris are concerned. Couldn't have gone better there, catching Mooba out in the open. Great, so, great start. Yep, first control goes Paris' way. Gray getting very close to the Nano, so we're going to have some opportunity here for Ben Best to swing some hammers into faces and get that Shatter online all the quicker. Yeah, we're almost already going to have an EMP. Dante is such a monster on Sombra. Considered one of the first Sombra specialists when they were just trying to find a place for Dante to play. He's got EMP up already, charging in 58 seconds. That was the story. Oh, buddy. Now we go in. EMP's there. Ben Best instantly obliterated. Gray did get the boost off, but that's not like a trance. That's not going to keep everybody up and healthy. And the Houston Outlaws proceed to wipe Paris Eternal out. Send them back to spawn. A nice anti-late, but it's not going to matter. Links it does go down again. So that's going to reset his Zarya energy charge. He's going to have to work on building that up with bubble management usage on his allies and himself. But it's always a bad thing when you win a fight and you lose your Zarya, because now you're back at zero on that energy. He needs to get back into this fight. It looks like he will be able to stomp his way back in. Just in the nick of time here, Paris Eternal. Just now rallying up. They're getting boosted in here by Boyne. Or not by Boyne, obviously Cruz, giving them the speed boost. Now just the, the dance of rotations. Paris will just drop dead center in. Put some pressure on this. Oh, oh into the hole. All right, that time it was Boink. And that time Boink makes the play. Knocks Ben Best out of position, into the hole. He might as well be a dead man. And well, he is going to be dead after all, so that's it. 
Another one fight here for the Houston Outlaws who have taken the lead on the first point of Oasis. 45% on the board for them. I actually think it's worse than dying because you're almost always going to get staggered out. You drop somebody in the pit, now your team has a 6v5. You're almost always going to win that. And then it's the long walk up, so the tank is going to die anyway, staggered out late. I mean, it's yeah. such an important part of this map, being able to knock people into the hole and take them out of the fight without even having to do damage to them. Oh, big rally there. Nice hack on the Into the hole Hunter again! Slow things, and did Benbest go out? Again, yeah, he's stomping his way back into the fight, but it's gonna take him forever. His team, however, this time are doing a good job of backing off, and he will survive it. They will survive it as well, only to find themselves caught in a grab. Nice Bionade though on Paris Eternal, gonna keep him whole and healthy, and so far the fight is going the way of Paris Eternal. They're gonna find the first kill on Boy. Ben Best getting great support from his team. Danye keeping him up with the bubbles. There's a chance here for Paris. It was so close for Ben Best going into the hole again, but he stays alive. Point falls before he's able to get barrier down. This one's still on a razor's edge as both of the Brigitte's fall. With Muma going down, Paris will flip this back in control. Houston is in a single fight scenario here. You win a single fight at 99%. You're going to win the rounds, and they've got EMP to work with. Yeah, Dante's going to be able to set that up. Sound barrier as well. And they could just go crushing right through the defense here. Paris Eternal, though. Sound barrier. What is that? Rockus with the volley. That's a terrible start. A huge opening here for uh, the Houston Outlaws to move in onto the point. Ah, oh, that's really brutal. That's your main heals out. Lucio just not enough to keep them alive. They're going to have to use alts here. Huge bombs. Uh, there's a bomb in from Finzi, but whether that's going to be enough, doubtful so far. Danye staying alive could make the difference. Nico with the bubble. Muma's getting focused, and Muma caught out. Not enough healing there, and Boink and somehow Paris and Turtle are going to turn this around off the back of a huge self-destruct. The silver lining for the Houston Outlaws is that they have all the ultimates to win the next fight. EMP should just be trying to target down Cruz, who's going to be hiding from it. And then they have Grab, Shatter, and Rally. So they've got, on paper, everything they need to win this next fight and take this first round. This is nice, though. It's a bit of a reminder, Gray. In FPS games, you know, there's an old adage, don't peek before you die. Yeah. There you go. You peek, you nearly cost your team the first point. You were able to get saved, though, thanks to Finzi. Now let's see, Nico's in, there's the EMP. First goes down, Ben Best follows. And Houston Outlaws with two quick kills, gonna make it a third. Danya getting overwhelmed, and this has got to be it here now for Houston Outlaws. I love that order of operations from the Houston Outlaws to open the fight with Graviton. It forces Cruz to use his sound barrier. Then comes the EMP to strip the shields off. Good execution for the Outlaws will net them his first round on Oasis. Yep, solid. That's the start. It did look a little bumpy though, but that's actually what, to, what I think we can expect from both of these teams. They are still in the middle of the pack and they are fairly yeah. even in terms of their performance right now. Both of them putting themselves on the board as a threat, but they haven't quite made it up to the elite status at the top of the seat, at the top of the league. Yeah, as we move into City Center on Oasis, this is the hey. stage that I really want to see them run a far on. I, th I believe we had them against New York when they started to show signs of life, but then we got down to Oasis and they were running a Winston and an Ana and the, a bunch of other tanks and random stuff. And it seemed like there was no win condition. When were you ever gonna get kills? Spoiler, they didn't, they lost. So I think this is a great map to run more damage dealer heavy compositions. Put Muma on the Hammond here, let Linkser plink away and let Jake rain from above. Oh, he was so close. That would've been sick. Danya would've been put on blast instead. It's just gonna be rockets blowing up in their faces. Paris Eternal now. Now that they know what they've got to wait for, it doesn't look like there are gonna be any changes. They're already committed. Linkser is switching. He went back and now he's on Brigida. So he's probably just going to be on Rockus protection duty up top. That's where they like to sit Rockus up on that Ana. That's fine. Rockus is going to be able to keep him up. Heals is so important now. Jake is just going to be so happy right now. Just chucking Rockets left and right over the top. Very little that uh, Paris can do to stop him, apart from just a poke battle here and there. He's going to be getting topped up. Cruz super low. Took an anti. Direct Rocket there. Now Jake is up to like... Jake has nearly got Barrage. This is going to get dicey here for the first fight on the Paris of Turtles. Because Dante's got the EMP. Barrage is coming online. There's the EMP. There's the Barrage. One, two. Are we going to get a third? Dante, direct rocket. He's out. Quad kill for Jake. And that's the Houston Outlaws flipping the point. That, that's how you write it up here. It's such a difficult map overall. Every round is very difficult to flip over because of the area of how large these control points are. So you need those very decisive fights early on. EMP Barrage, that's exactly how you draw it up. Houston will finally take control, but during that, 
the free capture went to Paris first, so they have some percentage on board. Now it's a game of catch up for them, and Zanya is not far off of his EMP. But do they have? Where's the damage? Where is where is just crushing the crushing force that you get with the barrage that Houston Outlaws have elected to run? As far as Paris are concerned, it's going to be the EMP. Zanya is going to be setting it up. He's going to be looking for his angle, trying to perhaps get up to the high ground here to bop Rockus on the on the way up. They're looking for him too. He tries to get up. Does hit Jake? Drop like a rock from the sky. Hit Jake, but Boink is still alive, and Rockus did not get hit. There's still a boost for a spot heal on the side of Rockus. Gonna be very difficult for anybody to die on the Houston Outlaws. All the support is there. Rockus again. You can't make. I guess the play here for Danya is not to make Rockus the priority because Rockus is just so good at dodging EMP. If you're wasting time trying to pick Rockus, right. that you may miss the big window. But then Rockus is chilling there with the Nano. So you focus somebody, add Nano, back to, back to full health. There's also nothing to stop these anti-heals too. An enormous anti-heal came down before this. And of course, Jake's still just hitting every single rocket. Oh, the timing, impeccable. Oh, God. Impeccable yep. timing. They've got nothing to really shoot at up here. I mean, Gray can open with Coalescence, but it's not that great of an ultimate ability. Well, let's see. Jake's got the barrage again. The question is whether he's patient. Does he wait for an EMP? He wait for uh, Dante to open it up, or does he see a chance here and just come right over the top point? Blank, that's exactly what he's doing. And it's a bit greedy there. It's a bit greedy there for Jake. There's a reason that Barrage is often referred to as press Q to go back to spawn. A very difficult ultimate to live through without an extreme amount of support from your team, whether it's your ally D.Va, whether it's getting a Zarya shield in the sky, or getting nano boosted simply so you don't drop like a stone like happened there. A little bit rough. Paris will take it back. Again, though, Houston has put themselves in the checkmate position. One fight away from winning this round, and thus Oasis as a whole. It is tough. It is tough if you're Jake. You can see it. It's always the same thing when you're playing damage and you got the big barrage. Yeah. You're just seeing it in your mind's eye. I'm going to blow them all up. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. It and then, always seems like it's going to work. And then, yeah, turns out not so much. Uh, MP is ready for Dante. That's their win condition. He would love to get this hack on to Donye. Donye versus Dante in the somber battle. Not confusing at all. <laughs> nice Best lead. That could be it. EMP over to the top. Hey, oh, massive EMP. All six silenced on side of Paris. Houston Outlaws with a golden opportunity. Nico down immediately. Puma getting focused. He's still hanging in this fight, though. Lynx is there with the rally as well. Gonna be so difficult to kill him. And that's two kills now for the Houston Outlaws. Really setting themselves up. This is it. The Houston Outlaws. Coming in strong. It's always nice to see the DPS reign supreme. Oasis and Farah. Peanut butter and jelly. Name a better combination. Always so good on this map. The architecture allows it. Houston comes out strong. Won't make it in time. 2-0. Houston Outlaws showing what they're capable of here at the beginning of this series. 1-0 lead in maps for them. We're taking a break and we'll be right back with Map 2 after that. The Overwatch League is powered by Intel. Game, record, stream without compromise on Intel Core i7. And by Omen by HP, the official PC and display of the Overwatch League.
Welcome to Assist of the Week, presented by State Farm. The Houston Outlaws had a difficult task against the dominant San Francisco Shock, but on map one stole a fight with Rockus's bionic grenade dropping right in the middle of the entire Shock team, giving the Outlaws a decisive fight. So look at that, Sleep Dart, no Matrix. He walks up and bionic grenades the massive San Francisco Shock players. That is some great auto play from Rockus. You got Rockus on your screen right there, the man who had the performance on the first map, keeping everybody topped up, just dodging EMPs like he's Neo in the Matrix. Guy is just impossible to touch. It's been a very good stage for Rockus. There weren't a whole lot of things to smile about in stage two, but it's a completely different Houston team. They're overcoming some of the hurdles. That's the first time they've won Oasis. They also, I believe, are winless on our next map incoming, which is Paris. Not to be confused with Paris the Eternal, who are very good at that map. So they are three and zero one, I believe. But Paris has been very good for their home team, if you will. There's something about it. They see the Eiffel Tower standing tall there in the back, all proud and everything. They're like, we gotta do it, boys. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> and well, that leads to uh, potential bunker comps. Yep, you see the Outlaws 0-2 there, but they were also winless on Oasis, so. There's going to be a lot of zeros for the Outlaws. You can disregard them. That's a first half of the year kind of zero right there. We'll see what the defense wants to run here, and Paris going to be defending first. That's the second point right there. Take the first point, unlocks the second point. That's it. Capture two points. That's how Assault works. And I do believe Paris will be running the bunker composition. Now, they've run this before. They like to run this bunker composition. The big winchpin, the one time they got crushed on it was when Cruz, I think, just got dinked first. You can't run a bunker composition to lose Baptiste first. He's so important to it. It's why you see bunker comps now, immortality field, a ton of healing output, and amplification matrix makes Bastion, well, the thing of nightmares. You, you do wake up screaming. Dying in a hail of bullets, Muma. Oh, yanks, there it is. That's another thing that's so powerful. There's the first pick. I mean, granted, it's Puma on the offense. It's just going to delay things on the offense. But still, that's another thing that you have to worry about if you're on the offense. This halt combo yeah. into just getting blasted by Danye. Uh, what are you going to do there? He got halted, oh, he got anti-healed, and then on his way out, he got Sombred in the end, too. It's a nice pick up there for Miko to get that done. Puma's trying to roll in now, though. Whoa, this is dangerous. Gray getting overwhelmed. The damage is too much. Danye nearly went down as well. Puma's going to pay for it. So it's a one for one, but losing Gray. That's going to be a thorn because now you even have Dante in the back line. He can cut Gray off from this fight forever. Boy, bold as brass gets the Grez off on MoMA, but we lose Rockus, and that's not going to help things here for the offense. Yeah, enormous displacement to get those early kills. Another great yoink there. The halt ability from Orisa is so good. I knew it was only a matter of time when she was released that pros would start using it to the next level. It's a mini grab on cooldown. Exactly, that's the thing. You actually saw it, you rub your eyes, you're thinking, really, this is just a regular ability on cooldown? We're just gonna do that? It's very powerful. Okay, then. Configuration tank now available for Danye. Well, you gotta bring the horse to value, I guess. There it is, the halt, it's a death. It's so possible, it's so difficult to deal with this hard hold. Jake just over the top trying to break this uh, shield, but yeah. the thing is, Orisa's shield is on an eight-second cooldown. It's Dante in the back that you have to really oh. keep an eye on. That's enormous. Oh. They can go in right now. They have EMP, they have Dragon, they have all the follow-up in the world, and no main tank. Another big part of the bunker comp. Ow! How does Ben Best give that up? Dante now with the EMP. He's gonna nail him. There it is, the Dragon right on through. Nowhere for Gray to go. And now they're set up on point here, Houston Outlaws, and just like that, it all falls apart. This time it wasn't Cruz, it was Ben best. That's the thing about the bunker comp is it is so vulnerable to just losing one piece. It's like pulling parts out of the bottom of a Jenga tower. Do so at your own there. peril. Done that. Yeah, yeah, I've seen you do it actually. <laughs> But that's it. once you lose one, it falls apart. That's why some teams will even opt to start running a Mercy with this too. You saw the Resurrections coming in from Houston with their own Mercy, but if you run it on defense, that one mistake won't crush the entire point of your composition. Uh, so it was looking so good up to that point too. Houston were really struggling to find ground. Now they've got ults online. The thing is that Nico's sitting there with an EMP as well, so he can be the one to kind of end all the fun here on the second point. Mine's dropped up top. <laughs> Moment just getting destroyed though. Immortality feels a good ability. Drop mines on him, doesn't care, just sits there. Yeah, and now Danya has got the tank mode. Gonna be so difficult here for Houston Outlaws. They just have to wait it out. That's that's that should be fine. Uh, Link sir, you're playing with fire, man. Going for peaks like that. Zoning all. Uh Nico's still holding on to EMP. 
All right, let's see, does this work? Because now we've got Danya going for Widow. Gonna have to find some value here as Boink has got the wings out. Jake, there it is, there it is. Danya with the follow-up shots, getting the job done. Nico with the EMP, goodbye, Rockus. Jake is gonna be gone as well. So far, so good here for Paris. They very, recovered. Very strong holds. It's gonna be interesting to see if the Outlaws change compositions here because DPS is very good on a lot of first points of Assault, but second points tend to still be the home of 3-3 compositions here. Very difficult to run a 3-3 into a Bastion, though. Boom. So what's gonna happen? We've seen it work, though. If, if Muma can get under the ledge where the Bastion is set up, then the Bastion can't shoot at him. So we've seen some crazy things in the past. Yeah. But uh, right now, Houston, they, they're, that's what they're going for. You lose the barrage on Jake. Yeah. It's great anticipation from Paris, though, too, knowing that there's very likely going to be a switch into different tanks. So they get off of the Widowmaker, who's not as effective against those tanks. That's just a way to ruin your day. Oh, uh, Nico, did not. You gotta go back. You got the trap. You can't do anything right now. That's the, the ultimate they needed to go in was the EMP gets trapped and blown up. But that's a, it's a great switch to go to the Junkrat here instead of staying on the Widowmaker. Just less effective against these giant tanks. I mean, there's two shields that they switched into. Brigitte's got one, Reinhardt's got one, Zarya's got any quasi shields. Mm -hmm. So really smart here. Nico's just gonna try to chunk him down at the rat. Ah, uh, rat overwatch, it's been a while. Jake is looking at it, you know, wishing. But there's the first, EMP over the top, taking Danye out, but there's still a plenty of chance. Nice sleep here. No, they're not gonna touch the point. What is going on? It looks like Ben Best was about to get there, might have gotten displaced, hard to tell from that angle. Unfortunately, yeah, we didn't have eyes on the point there. Just caught us all by surprise. But we're gonna be taking a break, and when we come back, we will Paris on the offense. Coca-Cola is the official refreshment of the Overwatch League. I'm, I'm, I'm not 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 I'm Ah, oh, you just hear the air coming out of him right there. That's brutal. That'll deflate uh, the balloon there. That'll definitely not uh, make you happy. You can see Cruz too. I mean, he's gonna be the first one to react. Like no one could touch, nobody could call it. There's, there's, there's where the fault is in comms or in not knowing who's supposed to be doing what. Yeah. They just got completely caught off guard. But so did we, Hex. We didn't even catch it on camera. We were just. Nobody was expecting that, but Houston are the ones to benefit. Yeah. Oh, it looks like we do get the play all from the top down view, so. Let's take a little look here. Dante gets slept, he comes out, and then what happens here? Yeah, well, everyone's hacked, and now they're coming around. I thought Ben Best would have the best chance to get it here. He gets charged he gets a little bit. By yeah. Jake. He gets charged by Jake. That was it. That's the difference maker. He touches it otherwise. Yeah, probably. But it still shouldn't really come down to that. We talk about some of the best teams always have this plan of who's going to touch when, who can sacrifice themselves. New York is probably the best team at it, in my opinion. That's rough. 
You gotta forget about it though. Still much more of this map to play. That's fine. Now all you have to do is just win an offense. See what they want to run here. Donnie goes very, very low early on <laughs> in his scouting endeavor as Sombra. Look, Jake is grinning right now. <laughs> I wonder why. He's on the rat. This is what made him his name, made his name in the season in the league last year. And it's not like other teams didn't try to run it. He was just the best at it. He was just the best rat. Yeah. His yeah. junk rat on Eichenwalds was always the thing of legends to me. On that second point, people could never track him down. So I see him on that hero. An interesting composition here from the Houston Outlaws defense. Bunker-ish, but no Bastion. Gonna run the Junkrat and the Widow instead. Uh, somewhat reminiscent of what we used to see a lot on Anubis defenses. Just let your let, oh. let your guys go to work. Let them play what they want to. Oh, the body block though. Nicely done there by Finzi. But he loses his mech because of it, so that's frustrating. But he kept Cruz alive in that res. Yeah. But you got Linkser, you got Jake on the Jake Rat, and you got Linkser on Widow. I mean, right now, Houston, this is them playing to their strengths. This is 2018 era Houston Outlaws for sure, composition wise. You had a nice little sprinkling of Dante, the EMP specialist here as well. You get Looking Dante good. on Sombra. This is, this is just a game winning combo. Yeah, and right now, Paris playing very slow, trying to get the perfect setup, trying to get the Hanzo in a shield cracking position. And that was it. They're baiting out the halts. Yeah, they get it. Oh, Muma going down. That's Great. not going to help things. Great execution. But it doesn't matter. Yeah. Linkser takes on Donnie. And the res comes back up. Full strength, both sides. Donnie gets a better Linkser there, though. That was so close. That was so close. But we've lost point. EMP getting thrown in. This is bold on the side of Houston. And they're getting kills off the back of it. It would be amazing if they were capable of stabilizing here. And it looks like they will achieve it because nobody's on the point for Paris. Yeah. That's a do or die EMP. You have to get that done. Otherwise, you very likely lose the fight. So they will just go at it. Having lost the main tank is usually this is over for us. There's nowhere to hide. But they commit ultimates, they get it done. But you have to wonder if they're borrowing from tomorrow to pay for today, because now Houston doesn't really have anything on defense. Yeah, Rockus, the master with the trance. Oh no, and Rockus goes down. That was the ult. Now we're gonna get the bongos out. Point gets the res up on Rockus, but then Donye is just dominating Linkser. Back to back kills on him. Rockus with the volley right on back though. It's tip for tat right now, going back and forth so close. Trying to get these sight lines here. He sees the Sombra very likely going to hit his infra sight here the moment that Dante goes down, or invisible at least. Yep, there it is. The wings coming out here from Boink. But Dante going down to the dragon. That is no bueno. Lynx is on the tracer now, just trying to get back here all the quicker. Now they need to get out and try and challenge it, but Muma just gonna walk his way out there and die. And this is just Houston Outlaws going for a quick reset. They realize they've lost the fight and they're just going, just get out of here. Get back to spawn. Yeah, we'll see if any changes come through or they want to roll with this. This might be why Donnie was saving his infrasight too. It allows you to scout from across the map, being able to see everyone's silhouettes through the walls, but they want to stick with this. All right, we're seeing a lot of variation in Overwatch lately. If you were tired of 3-3, call your friends, tell them to come back, because we're not running it anymore. Not all the time, anyway. Not exactly, not all the time. You still got the teams. That's good. I like variety. Spice of life, they say. Exactly. Halt hook combo, though. There's the EMP over the top. Gonna chase Paris out, looking to stabilize here on the side of Houston, but they are going back and forth. I think they've already lost too many, but they're gonna commit this resurrection. Oh, That's a huge open! Oh, that is it. This is the chance now for Paris. They can wipe him out. Linkster's gone to, to the May, hoping to... Well, I mean, that is the master delay hero right there. Hop into the ice block, buy some time. Boomer's gonna leap in here on the Winston, trying to get back into this fight. It's a big anti on two heroes for Paris. Dragon's trying to clear our corner. Oh, we did a good job of it too. Rockus has to back off. They are still doing a good job of delaying things here. They are still alive. Two takes the permanent progress picked up for Paris. Every kill that happens here for Houston Outlaws hurts the offense so much more. But Paris, they're doing a great job right now of stabilizing, of sticking together. It's, it's a great delay, but I think it is just delaying the inevitable. They're gonna need at least one more kill to get this done here, but now you're stuck on delay heroes. The kill potential is much lower. Uh, Boink onto it, and that's it. Paris tying it up. Two to two on their home map. Getting the job done and quicker than the Houston Outlaws as well. Thought the Houston Outlaws were able to pull it off pretty fast there. That's why you got to stay mentally strong as Paris. Forget your first blunder. We're going to do it all again on Paris. White when we return.
around for a bit of that break analysis. Kind of trying to figure out what happened with Houston Outlaws there. But I mean, Lynx are getting taken out by Donye twice in a row, back to back. Yeah. Really forces a lot of pressure onto the back line for Houston. Boink, you know, kind of struggling. We got the 2K here from Finzi, a self-destruct right into the corner. Perfect positioning. And that's why the trance comes out, so that Rocket survives, I suppose. Yeah, it's even better. You get kills, and then you also force out a critical ultimate ability. So, let's forget what happened in the first half of Paris, because these teams are essentially tied. 329 in the bank for the Paris Eternal. 320 on the clock for the Houston Outlaws as they go into their second round of attack. Bunker composition, pure bunker for Paris' defense. And offensively, we'll see. If they want to make some switches here to deal with this. Well, it's looking like they're sticking to their guns for now. And you're going to get the Halt's combo here pretty soon, I bet. I bet you, I bet you, Jake. Doing a lot of damage to Donye, but it's going to be Donye to remove Rockets to kick things off here. We're past the three-minute mark for Houston Outlaws. Res used by Boink. Well, they got Ben Bess in an awkward position as he tries to reset up here. Got knocked down, and now he's going to try to get that shield down. They're reset. I kind of want to see. I mean, move up once again. Did it again. Throwing himself in there. Destabilizes things. Danye out of position. No res here for Paris Eternal. Danye, he's got a long way to go to get back into this fight. That is not ideal here for Paris on the defense. The displacement has been so good. From Muma knocking them off the shelf to the concussion blast in from Jake over top. I think it's time to just get a little more aggro if you're Houston, though. They just waited around. They're waiting around, and this is going to allow for Danye to get back. Danye has actually swapped. He's gone for the Soldier 76 to be able to sprint back here faster. No point in being on the uh, Bastion if you can't set up the hard point hold. And so we are going to get Houston Outlaws now moving their way onto the point. Jake could be the bouncer. Yep. Barrage. Barrage. There it is. I think it's too late. They lost two on the incoming there. Cruz is able to keep his team alive. Just got to get this Mercy so there's no reses. And this one is scrappy as can be, but Paris for the moment has stabilized on first point defense. But the respawn advantage hugely in favor of Houston. Well, Frisbee goes out and keeping everybody up. Dante, just doing a good job of getting that EMP up. They're still going to have another push, though, so it shouldn't be. It's not end of days here for Houston, although the fight just seems to keep going on forever and ever as Rockus donates a trance. Well, they force Transcendence out here early, too, so Paris can get up to an EMP. They're in a good spot. Another EMP goes off, but then a counter on the side of Paris. Doing a good job. One tick of permanent progress picked up for Houston Outlaws, making it very difficult for Paris to get out here and challenge. Eventually, that will be the case, so eventually they're going to do it. They're going to commit. Men best. Nearly knocked off the side by Muma, and that puts him out of position. And in, in these kind of war of attrition, these trade games, the offense on Assault is so greatly favored. The walk back for the defense, the salty run back is very long ways going. So if you're just able to trade out effectively, eventually you will win that offense. Let's take a look at where the ultimate economies for both these teams are. No switches coming in from the offense. So they're just going to preemptively Valkyrie to get in here and try to put a lot of pressure on. No ultimates available for Paris. Huge ball spot takes off Cruz. That's all they're healing. That's so big now. No, immor no invulnerability. They are going to be able to get in here now. Ben Best getting overwhelmed. And Linkser, actually Link's liking Linkser a lot more on the Tracer than on the Widow. It's been very good for them this stage. Barely contesting the back line. Instant the deletion there. Nico out. Ben Bass is going to be going for it. Finzi was on the hamster, but it's not going to be enough. They will not make it out in time, and Paris failed to hold. Four to two now for Houston Outlaws. Looking good. Jake, looking confident as always. Links are just stick to Tracer. Yeah, the, it, it seems like, uh, you know, Houston finally found their Tracer player. <laughs> a year, and, a year and a half later. All this time. He was on the roster the entire time. I think last year, a lot of it was you wanted to run Tracer and Widow at the same time. Um, also, Linkser was their best Genji. So it's like Linkser's their best at so many things that you had to find somebody else to pick up Tracer as well. Wasn't that also the point of bringing Dante on board? Yeah, Dante's also a very, very good Dante's Tracer. Dante's a very capable Tracer, yeah. but then it just so happened that Sombra came into the meta and Dante was like, hey, by the way, I can play a really good Sombra too. Yeah. There's a lot of uh, crossover play between Tracers and Sombras. Sinatra being one you keep in mind as well. Mm -hmm. That tracking, very important. Say BOB. So, well, we're not. We're getting to see him play again. Yeah, just pure joy. Seconds. Pure joy. As we go into it, Paris Eternal. Uh, he wasn't able to finish that attack with even more time in their bank too. So not even an overtime situation. That was a very Later. swift attack. Able to snowball that. I think that's why a lot of teams. You know, like three three was very good, but a lot of teams. I, I just didn't have the confidence in their DPS ults to take it from point A to point B. 
because you know there, there's some of the DPS ultimates are low impact ultimates. Yeah. Not when you're sticking pulse bombs though. Oh, you gotta just get the stick. That's the thing. It's a lot easier just to hit a sound barrier than uh, you know hit a pulse. <laughs> that's for sure. Uh, a little bit of a sneak there. Nico just checking to see where Dante's trying to lurk. Dante though. Other side of the choke, little does he know, halts into the open, instant dash back, nicely done there by Nico. And it looks like go time has come through here for Paris. They're gonna go ahead and try and break these shields, and Ben Best getting nuked by the rat. That Houston playing the bunk rat composition here, no Bastion. That is, is getting the better of Linkser, and Linkser was statistically the best counter sniper in the league for the first couple stages last year. But Donia has been very impressive on his Widow. They're working so well together. You get the sonic arrow in there, then you get to, you know, it's like, where is he? Okay, there's the sonic arrow. Now you see him through walls. And so Jake has to go and deal with the Widow on his own. He's like, fair enough. Fine, Linkser, I'll cut you some slack. I'll help you out. Right, I know you wanted to play Tracer. Well, Houston's defense looking stout thus far. No one in Paris has even gotten past the doorway here. Dante building EFB rather quickly at 70%. He still have to deal with a tire. Yeah. That will ruin the parade. Ben Bass is just getting melted down. It's so hard to move forward with the Orisa like that. When you've just got nades all over the place. Rockus right now just getting set up for volleys of his own. I'm gonna preemptively bow. Muma doing a good job of staying out of harm's way this time though. Not dropping off onto the other side. And now we're gonna get that, t that tire over the top. Looking for an angle, eats a rocket, point flight. Boom, DMAC on Finzi and that's gonna slow things down. Links it with a good dodge. Looking for that ult battery, that's great. Very nice target of opportunity there to take down the D.Va. You'd already eaten some damage on the tire, so you make sure you at least get the detonation off. And again, they've not even gotten past this archway. I love to see this kind of play, though, between Sombra and Tracer. They are the ultimate assassination duo. You just call it out, hey, got this guy, cut him off. Boom, the two of them together, very little's gonna survive that. So like Linkster and Dante, if they work together as a unit, that's so brutal. Paris now. What do they got for us? Well, we got an EMP on the side of Houston. Right into the thick of things. Everybody hacked. A full hack, but yet still a kill. Cruz and Ben Bass going down, though. Danye following, and this is going to be Houston Outlaws stabilizing. Now they get the resurrection whilst denying the Houston resurrect, or yeah, whilst denying the Paris resurrection as well. Killing Cruz early on. And we're down to very likely the last approach for Paris to try to put some points on the board here. 60 seconds remaining. I guess you just chuck a dragon in and hope to clear off the ledge and follow it in there. Still got the deadly duo on Linkster and Dante as well. Yeah, they're hiding in the back line. Right, now they're gonna pull on rotate. All right, let's see. Dragon through, trying to cut them in half. Doesn't quite work. Jake with the rocket. Oh, that's not what you want to bring. No, you do not want to bring that tire closer to you. There's Linkster to pounce on him. Everybody getting wiped out on the side of Paris, and Paris have got 30 seconds left on the clock. Hex, they do not have time for all of this. Oh, it's actually not that bad to try to hook the tire there because you'll take it, you can live through it as a hog, you can also barely. breathe through it as a hog, and you make sure that your supports aren't being targeted with it, but the follow-up too strong for Houston's defense. You preemptively Valk here, you chuck everything that you have in if you're Paris, it's time to go. Bong goes down on both sides. Ben Bass has been getting melted! Yeah, and there's the Red's attempt, so Cruz is under pressure. Cruz will survive thanks to the wings, but nobody able to... No! Cruz was there! There's a vertical aspect to trying to touch the point. You get a little too high and you don't get counted. Yeah, there's that. That's so frustrating now for Cruz. Just not able to get on the point a couple times now. It's gonna cost him 2-0 lead in maps now for the Houston Outlaws match point when we come back after the break. The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile, now connecting 99% of Overwatch League fans. Catch your league on America's network, T-Mobile.
The Outlaws are looking to stay hot here in Stage 3, and they're off to a pretty good start in this one. It's Houston up 2-0 over Paris at the break. What's up, everybody? Malik here with Zoe and Sideshow once again. Uh, all right, so it was going into this match, Houston had not won those first two maps at all in this stage so far. But today, they're taking care of business against the Paris Eternal. Yeah, honestly, Paris, one of Paris' best maps. And yeah. for Houston to be able to come out and win that, we thought it wouldn't be a good map, Paul. Yeah. But now it seems like Houston is just going to be able to dominate. That, that was just you. I don't want to be dragged <laughs> into this one. I always believed in the Houston Oh, uh, sure, sure. Well, well, let's go ahead and jump into the highlights. Starting off at Oasis, uh, we got to see lots of DPS. So I was very happy because we got lots of damage. Yeah, and it was great to see, of course, Jake on that far out working so very well on this very map. And honestly, they did try to kind of counter him, having that Mortar, having that D.Va, but they just couldn't quite do. I think the only time where he actually got shut down was when Danya EMP'd him out of the air. But other than that, they really weren't able to put any stop to the amount of damage he did. And of course, on the floor, then they still had Muma on the ball and they had the Zombra. So that was like all sorts of chaos coming from a Houston Outlaws. And I love this. It's Houston playing to a style that the lower teams or the mid-level teams where Paris is roughly at will really struggle to deal with. And despite the fact that Paris really know how to play on this map, the hometown advantage we always joke about, sure. Paris on Paris, but they are a pretty good team on this map. They have their, their strats and they know how to coordinate. And it looks like Houston have come up with some specific stuff to break down their style and have good comps of their own. They got Jake on the Junkrat, Boomer on the Orisa, Linkster on the Widow. These are comfort picks for the Houston Outlaws. It was close, though. We got to be fair here. I do think that still this map could have gone either way. There were just a few team fights which really set them apart. And overall, if we looked at the fractional kills from both of these teams, they were like three away from each other. So it was a close one. Yeah, it definitely was close. But it is good to see everybody on their comfort picks. Uh, also, Houston had a tracer all along. How did we know? How did we not know this? <laughs> they had three. <laughs> Linkster <laughs> was fine. killing it. All right, so... Uh, you know, Houston being back in uh, dominant again, back to prominence, so to speak, has been very interesting because at the beginning of the season, there were a lot of naysayers. So we asked uh, all the Houston fans out there, what do you want to say to everyone who predicted the Outlaws would go winless for the rest of the season? And we got some pretty good responses. Starting off with this one right here. I mean, those are really responses to Brennan <laughs> saying that they are going to go winless in the state. Honestly, though, it looked like it for a while. It's been crazy, the turnaround that the Houston Outlaws have had, but the fans always believe. Pickers and I will never count Muma and the boys out. They work hard. Don't give up, and they don't care about how good you think they are. They know exactly what they're capable of. I love that one. Yeah, and that's that why they right remain there. so positive despite going winless throughout stage two, I'm sure. All right. All right. Your predictions wasn't baseless. Their upsurge is an anomaly. You made the right decision. Wow. And so Monty, Monty was, was right. Wow. Let's make sure that hashtag still never waiting. Trends. Yeah, we're still waiting for that apology. Really. <laughs> make sure that never trends. <laughs> All right. In our next one. All it takes is some faith, trust, and pixie dust. Oh, and a little bit of Dante, of course. A whole lot of Dante. He <laughs> really Dante. has been the huge bonus of them. Would you say Dante is pixie dust? Uh, yes, Dante. <laughs> That's seems the conclusion to just, I draw. Yeah, you just wiggle Dante, out flops a load of pixie dust, and then oh, you can fly. I, you think happy I, what thoughts. What did you just say? <laughs> All right, so I can't this even. is an interesting tweet tweet by, D by W. McGee. He says, if they style on Paris today, you can make an argument for them being one of the top five teams in the league. But can they beat the Titans in YXL? Shocking and Gladiators, probably not. But with Link's own Widow, you can win any fight. Guy's a beast. I agree with that one right yeah, there. Yeah, he is a bit of a beast. Top five, guys? Shit, what is this? <laughs> This isn't even relevant. I think this oh, is always relevant. So relevant. This isn't even slightly relevant. <laughs> Johnny, get, get back in the back. Uh, it's got nothing to do with what I was saying. So, it was Brent anyway that was talking uh, trash on the outlaw. Yeah, and you're getting a flat for it now, man. I don't know how that fits into the narrative, but I love it. Uh, keep it up, keep it up. Uh, so so let's, let's look ahead at what the Houston Outlaws have for the rest of the season because they're upsurging now at a good time, aren't they? 
Yes, but because the first half of their season was so poor, this is what I've put together. These are their expected wins moving forwards, uh, as I see it. So this is just looking at the rest of their schedule throughout stage three and then stage four. There are wins you would expect them to get. And it's really this pattern of games here between the Gladiators and the Spitfire that's important. Because if they win the games that I think they will, their projected record is still 12 and 16, which might not be enough to get them into 12th place and be able to play in for the playoffs. So they don't just have to win all the games they're expected to win, including a rematch against the Eternal. They also probably have to take some of the ones here, which is going to be difficult for them. Do you think, really, that the fusion will be the... I, I, don't... I don't know. I mean, judging by the I mean... current performance, maybe not. But I mean, the same for the Atlanta Reign. I mean, the, yeah, this is stage are... four. Yeah. Anything goes, right? Like, exactly. we don't know. Yeah, who knows? Now, if you look at Paris as well, Paris are another really interesting one. Because yep. at the moment, their record is way better. But expected wins... How many are there? There's only really three teams that I could point to and say, I think Paris are the favorites in this matchup. They face Outlaws twice, then there's Soul, there's Fusion, Dragons, Excelsior. These are tough matches. The Rain are looking pretty good. Paris are going to need to pull out some major upsets if they want to win, because their projected record would be 11 and 17. That's probably not going to be good enough to get you into 12th place. Right. I mean, who do the Paris, yeah. who do Paris upset? Yeah, there's a tough roadmap for them at the end of the season. So, you know, before they even get to all that, they still have this match against Houston, which they have not quite lost yet. So, no. no. Well, I mean, we all thought that Paris was going to win on Paris. That didn't happen. Yep. Now it's a we all of a sudden, right? <laughs> <laughs> right? I like but, how you <laughs> convenient, Zoe. <I> <laughs> But uh, the next two coming up, Hollywood and Dorado. Uh, we did say that Houston are the team relying on that Zombra. Both maps not really lending themselves to a heavy Zombra play. So this could be Paris Eternal to actually tie it back up. And then we will go into that tiebreaker match. And everyone knows that Outlaws love a tiebreaker match. They love <laughs> map five. But, but actually, with how confident they're feeling at the moment, we could see an upsurge in that as well. So tough road for Paris ahead. Right, well, Paris is going to need that reverse sweep if they want to stay in this one because right now the Houston Outlaws, they're just one map away from staying hot. So let's see if they can do it after the break. And when it comes to in-game communication, if they say some words in Korean, I understand like some of them that have to do with the enemy or some abilities or something like that.
Well, here we have it. You guys have it now thanks to the tip there during the break. You get to see the score. It turns out that Houston Outlaws are living up to the hype hex. 2-0. Paris Eternal falling flat on their faces on their home map. The green wall grows ever larger, and this looming they know threat how to build it. of the Outlaws going forward, and they look nothing really short of dominant. Paris, the map itself went very oddly for Paris, the team itself. There were a couple times you thought that maybe they can touch the point, but I think overall they just got outclassed there. And Houston are just chilling with DPS compositions. Look at these team fight win rates. Traditional 3-3. Boo! 25%. Yeah. Their Fair is very good. Sombra Ana has been very good for them, which we expect when you have a player of the caliber of Dante. And, you know, Soldier in the triple DPS has worked out well for them too, but their Sombra compositions are great. And this is why you see so many people were calling for it. Just stop playing 3-3. Just stop it. It makes sense sometimes, but don't force yourself into it because their team fight win rate was abysmal. Just put Lynx around Widow. Actually, yeah, it's Tracer. Actually, actually, yeah, exactly. I was about to say. Actually, don't put him on Widow anymore. Please put him on Tracer so him and Dante can just go running around assassinating yeah. people like just crazed psycho, you know, <laughs> like just killers. <laughs> like, that's exactly what's going on right now. All you're hearing is, you know, this British accent as you die and slowly bleed out in the back line. Because that's exactly what happened on Paris. You just had the two of them running all over the place, just gimping people. Yeah. You see there, a former teammate of Shaz and Big Goose. He was only on uh, Team Gigante, which is the Finnish team that most of these guys came up on. Only for a little bit, but made an impact there. We will be going over to Hollywood. You see the records for both these teams. One and two for Paris, oh and two for Houston, but they're trying to rewrite these record books that they have so far, because they're not very good. And what better way to do it than running a little bit more far? Up? Yeah. Play nice, play far. Uh, nice attempt, but the bubble was up. Finzi not going to get displaced. That would have been a golden opportunity for Houston Outlaws, but we'll still get Jake just coming over the top saying hello. Hi, guys. Rockets, shrapnel, pain. You like all that? Yep. You're stuck in the door. You got no way out. Oh, they crush Nico up top. A little combination bash brothers up top, and now it's all over, but the direct hit crying. A complete wipe coming from the skies from Houston, 6-0. They'll take Hollywood first with ease. Five lives for those final blows for Jake, and he's nearly got the barrage online. About as good as it gets. Hex is about as good as it gets for the Houston Outlaws here on the offense. They are just rip-roaring right through this. Linkser has gone for the Zarya. Okay, so a little bit of a swap there, but as far as they're concerned right now, Houston Outlaws, everything is working out beautifully. Uh, now getting all the free pressure that they want. EMP. You probably hold Barrage to wait for this EMP here. You're so close. Dante's at 95%. Oh, totally. You saw how successful it was on the first point when they did this. Oh, so close. Dante's out. There it is. The pick, but you lose Boink on the side of Houston. That is so go frustrating. Go. You can still go. EMP. Yep. There's a Barrage over the top. It was not with it. It was. It was. Okay. The combo did happen, but Dante got wiped out immediately. Still some nice stall here from Paris. What went very poorly on the first, but now they've got a sleeping target. That Roadhog anti-heal, no breather, no joy. Goodbye, Paris. And the cart will continue to push through Westworld here on Hollywood. Yeah, good job by Nico, by Finzi. Just get wiped out immediately. Get back to your team. That's enough stall. You need to come into six here so you can challenge on the point. Yeah. I wonder how comfortable Gray is on Moira. Not that it's the most demanding hero, but say. positioning changes a lot. Where you're going to be, when you're going to use your escapes. He's forced out of the Moira because of these heavy damage compositions. Moira at least has an escape, or Zen's just a, a floating target, really. Oh, buddy, Ben Bass, he's a big target. He's just stomped his way into his own death. That was brutal. There's the lighthouse going off. So, great. Perhaps we'll see a change coming up. He does manage, with the help of Finzi, to beam down Dante. But Dante gets prized up again, and there it is. Sound barrier coming through as well. They're just throwing everything in here willy-nilly on the side of Paris. Could go for the EMP. I don't know if you need it. Danya's going to go for the EMP. He's going to try and make it happen here. Muma, though. Muma's relentless. Muma finds one, but he's lost his teammates in the meantime. Oh, that nice body blocking there is going to keep him in the corner for a little bit. And now Houston finally cleaned up. Paris able to stabilize off the back of just a better EMP. Came out quicker before Dante could get his off. It was really going to be which Sombra was able to get that EMP off first. I think had Dante gotten it off, Houston wins that fight and takes the point. But now Paris has recovered just a little bit here. But now they have to fight into an EMP and they know this. The EMP barrage, no less. Yeah. I just don't even think you should use barrage anymore. 
Oh, that's our fabulous desk. You don't yep. get to see it too often. Beginning hey, of the show, end of the show. I'll be there later today. A little hex right. on the desk. Cruz looking for it. Over the top. Dante, I mean, he's got the eyes on him. Goes for the EMP. Looking for a way out. Will manage it, but that's Jake setting up the barrage. Only finding the single kill, though. Just as rains from four miles away. Might as well have been a different map right there. And because he's unable to secure that kill, kills are now coming in strong for Paris. And the coalescence from Gray is going to be enough to push Jake away. I think this is where you, yeah, you just get back over there. Time to change it up. Switching. A couple of barrages that didn't really get the value. Leave Dante, but Jake. What's he gonna go for here? He could go for Brig here. Yeah, yeah, that's gonna happen. So this is the switch. This is fine. It's not necessarily a three-three. It's the somber variation we've been seeing so much of lately. But other than that, a traditional three-tank three support composition. This is not terrible too because you can use the nano boost from Rockus onto one of your tanks, trade it in for a different alt. It's probably gonna go on Muma right now. Yeah, there's the boost. Gets hacked instantly, but that doesn't stop him from swinging his hammer. That's exactly what he was hoping for. There cuts Ben Best off. Ben Best has to back off, stay with the rest of his team. Nico's in trouble. Nico got very low there. But Mumo, first of all. Yeah, EMP over the top there from Danya. Hits everybody he needs to. They are struggling right now, Houston. Three down. And we're, we're nearly at a minute and a half left on the clock here for Houston Outlaws. They it's, are starting to get a little low on time. Yeah, they did make the changes early enough that they're going to be able to have these tank ultimates up. Graviton and Shatter should be up in next fight. That's a brutal stagger. Good job on Gray securing the final kill after a nice hack from Danya. Bit of pressure, a little bit of additional, but really just going to be burning more time off the clock. Well, this is your investment fight, right? Yeah. You just go for it right now. EMP, tank ultimates up. You can maybe wait and get rally. You can rally during this next fight. You should know that you're not pushing into an EMP. And so much of Overwatch right now with these kind of mirrored compositions is which team has EMP? Oh, okay, they should probably win. Should. Hack on great. What's the play here? Wasn't able to get the hack off. No, do you reset now because Linkser died first? Yeah, I mean, Linkser's out of it without your Zarya. You don't have the grab combo, you don't have the damage. Yeah, they have to go all the way back too. They don't want to get hacked and staggered out here like happened to them last time. So now you're all in on this last fight, which you were going to be anyway, but now you've got more ultimates to work with. You can rally in. Again, man of the hour, Dante, his counterpart on the other side, Don Ye, nearing an EMP of his own. Yeah, Gray is just ha hanging out. Exactly, there we go. Dante. Manual hack. Could he get out here and find it? There's the ground. Darted by Linkster. Could be the golden opportunity to go for it over the top. Gray forced to use the nano. Now we're going to get these EMPs coming through. Nice barrier from Cruz. Keeps his team alive. And Dante goes down. A counter EMP coming in. Paris looking to end this map right now. Yeah, triple down here for Houston Outlaws, sending him back to spawn. The stagger comes through, five seconds on the clock, and nobody here to touch. I mean, it is going to be Boink, but he's going to get hacked, he's going to get stunned, and it's not meant to be for the Houston Outlaws. No second point picked up. A ton of credit to Gray there, really disrupting Dante's plans for that EMP. That little 1v1 on the side forced Dante to translocate in a non-ideal position. Grab one off without him. Everything got messed up. That's what Somber does. That's why she's in the meta. She throws a wrench in your plans. We'll have the other half of Hollywood right after this. Coca-Cola is the official refreshment of the Overwatch League.
So here we have it, the Houston Outlaws. Something that we don't get to see too often here, Hex. They only get a single point on Hollywood. They are not able to lock down the second point. Despite going for the Sombra Goats, despite going for Dante, you know, on that key roll, didn't quite pan out for him. It, it kind of all just fell apart. Oh, yeah, and also, guys, if you are a big fan of Dante, if you're a fan of Linkser, you're a fan of any of these players, it turns out if you get the all-access pass, you can get it there, code at the bottom, or code uh, link at the bottom. Go there, you can follow any of the players, you can get the map, the fancy map that Hex and I keep looking at uh, during these Top games. Top-down is cool. Top-down is sick! So, go and pick up the pass, watch the game. Watch it your way. There you go. I've been watching uh, with the replay viewer. It's actually a great experience as well. Of course, I get to watch him live from the arena. I am gifted. Dante goes down early. And I was going to say, it all fell apart there for Houston at the end. It looks so uncoordinated than it was earlier. Yeah. Like, Lynx are dying first, set back. Dante going for these side picks and not getting them, set back. So that's why they really floundered on their offensive push. I would agree. Uh, that looks yeah. so hot here. Houston, that's... I mean, they're getting wiped out. This is it. Floundering on the defensive push, too. It's just Somer and Lucio in the corner. They're getting boxed out while the rest of the team is getting cleaned up. And, uh, yeah, that's going to be Boink having to ride home. Dante having to get out of there. This and is when you wish you were a fly on the wall in the locker rooms. What did the Houston Outlaws talk about during the break? And what did Paris Eternal talk about uh, during the break? Because Paris Eternal looked like a new team coming into this. Yeah, looked very strong. But... I mean, Houston had the exact same offense, right? 6-0, complete team guy. Like, but, I mean, I guess where Paris is at the advantage now is they don't have to switch anything about their composition. This is the comp they're going to run the remainder of the map. It's one of Paris's best compositions here. So it's really interesting. They have the flexibility to put Finzi on the Zarya while Donny moves over. Big sleep on the Linkser takes him out of the fight. Counter Shatter comes in, doesn't get anything. They're Audience was happy, but for nothing. <laughs> well, they, they hung out there, you know? <laughs> the payload, the angry boss VIP in there isn't making any progress. Probably gonna be late for a meeting. Houston Outlaws, they don't care. Ben best. Gotta be careful not to overextend there. Mooma nearly, well, put, he puts a dent in the car, but that's not gonna be a Ben best shaped dent. In fact, it's gonna be a Jake one. Really nice disengage there. The nano boost on Mooma gets almost nothing, though it does get him up to a shatter. MP right in there. Grab follow up and Houston Outlaws. Total obliteration. Paris Eternal. Couldn't go any cleaner than that. I could have. I mean, they lost a couple very early in that fight. It was seemed like it was going to be an overcommitment of that EMP, but they saw the opening there, and Nico just swinging away, a little mace to the face. And they are rolling through this. Over four minutes left, and you can already see victory in sight right around the corner of the saloon. Exactly. Oh, and the bold shatter thrown right in there. Rock is sniped immediately. Moma doing the best he can, but he's going to get overwhelmed. This is it. They're down to four players here on the side of the Houston Outlaws. Jake is getting focused relentlessly. He's hanging on by a thread, but Ben Best will finally best him. And they, this is the home stretch here for Paris. That hack is never coming through onto Azaria anyway. Very ambitious from Dante. And Paris not out of this one just yet. They will take Hollywood with supreme ease. Two to one, turning it around, really leaving me wondering what was going on with the coaches in the back because Paris, they're looking confident, they're looking good now coming out of the halftime. Gonna be fun to see how it plays out on our fourth map right after this. The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile. Now connecting 99% of Overwatch League fans. Catch your league on America's network, T-Mobile.
Welcome back. Man on your screen is Cruz. Lots of talking on his side. He is the man perhaps responsible for turning things around here for Paris. He's a talker. I think it's really important for Overwatch teams to have a strong mental game. You know, you could have just collapsed after Paris went the way it did for this Paris Eternal team. You know, a couple of uh, objective failures, not getting on the point correctly at the right time, but they, they overcame it. You got to forget it. Got to have that calm European mentality. I've been told that the Hope Springs Eternal Hex <laughs> hey, you know, maybe they're they're well named over on that side of things. You know, I mean, uh, maybe possible uh, reverse sweep could come through here. Oh, it's yeah. it's very possible here. We are going to be headed towards the wonderful map of Dorado, our escort map. You start with the payload, you push the payload. Simple as it gets. Attack get a little more time in. as you go through here. The Eternal, a whopping four and O oh on Dorado. The Outlaws, well, it's one of their better map records at one and one. <laughs> Yes, uh, it's going to be fun to see. But this is a different Outlaws, right, Hex? It's a different Outlaws. It is. It absolutely Toronto. is. I mean, first half Outlaws yeah. was completely different than second half Outlaws as we were seeing here. You could say it, a garbage fire. I mean, you know, it's kind of the way it was before. I, yeah, I would Beginning actually, of the season. Yeah, I'd say something worse than that, actually. <laughs> I, I think that would be insulting to both garbage and fire. Yeah, separate. I saw where you were going <laughs> with it. Ah, buddy. All right, let's get into the thick of things here. Jake over the top. Got the Rockets. And Paris Eternal. Well, they're struggling to get out the door. Ah, uh, the old combination of a Pharaoh Widow. <laughs> now Gray is going to have to go over to that Moira again. See an interesting composition for Paris as they roll out here. Who's ever really going to put pressure on this far? It's got to be the Junkrat. Got to at least have the threat of the road, or excuse me, the Roadhog. Oh, man. Oh, man. He is just farming right now. Jake has already got a barrage. Is he just looking for a juicy target? Yes, sir, he is. Still. Just waiting there, they're just gonna insta give him. I wonder if that's a switch coming in right now, because that was a very aggressive barrage, even for Jake here. They were able to take out Linkser early, so the fight was almost lost, it felt already. But look at this EMP differential Dante 80 plus, yeah. doubling Donye. We have a lot of very similar names in the world. We do. It sometimes makes things fun. Links are going for the change stuff. Anybody who's gonna go for the change? Jake stuck on the Faro. Links are on a Hanzo now. So this is gonna get fun. Dante looking for it. There it is. Get out of here, Gray. Dante gonna shut him down, and that was with the lighthouse blazing forth as well. So yeah. Houston Outlaws looking for a challenge on this payload, and it looks like they're gonna find it. Yeah, they're gonna be completely fine, and now the Roadhog might get farmed as well. It gets hit with an anti-heal. Well, get out! Well. All right, that was a bit scary. All right, so a very interesting early salvo from Houston, but now they've stabilized here. They're able to take two fights because of the very early reset off of the barrage, because Linkser went down early. Yeah, Linkser's Widows looks odd today. Uh, off, yeah. Maybe he's feeling it. Maybe there's some kind of input lag, you know, that's going on. So he has go he goes for Hanzo, because no, I respect it. Uh, there's some Widows who just will just keep grinding at it until it clicks. But if you know you don't have it today, Widows one of those heroes that sometimes you just don't have it. It's not hitting shots. It doesn't feel right. Then make the switch. Why not? Houston working with every ultimate they could possibly want. Only one without it is Linkser, who made a late switch on a Hanzo. But he's already halfway there. EMP very likely incoming this next fight. EMP barrage could be good. But I think EMP just shooting rockets and living might be better. Yeah, exactly. The pressure that Jake is putting on. EMP, he was out of range, so he's still in the sky. There's the boost. There's the barrage. One goes down, looking for two. He's gonna get it as well. And point blank, Gray just sacks himself. Throws himself out of the open to go back to spawn as quickly as possible. But there, that's the combination. But they used a lot on the side of the Houston Outlaws. They did toss in a lot. It was a nano boost. It was a minefield as well. But they still have Valkyrie here. I mean, Paris threw in the, the, what they did have, which was the EMP. It didn't work. But now Paris on the swing back is going to have several more ultimate abilities. However, that clock has already been drained so far down. One minute remains. Or time sure does fly. These are some nice rockets as well coming in from Jake. He's already halfway to another barrage. Let him get his challenge. Yep, there's the dragon. On to the point. Dante wins the pull versus Danya in the back line and gets the hack on Gray. Gray is just not allowed to have a coalescence that lasts the full duration. Does not meant to be. Nico finally brings Jake down to the ground, but Boink has got the wings out. He's doing a good job right now keeping his team off. The focus fire might be too good though, and Muma gonna get overwhelmed. Uh, they throw in everything that they have. No resurrection comes through on a Jake, so there's no firepower in the sky anymore. Everyone low on Paris, but in the end of the day, they will grab the first point and get an extension on their time bank. Got the most time to work with. 2.50 on the clock now for Paris. 
Yeah, I thought they had Paris dead to rights when that dragon came through there. Yeah. And Best was isolated, but not able to get the finishing blows that they need for the Houston Outlaws. The chaotic on the side of Houston. Moma got hooked in. That is not how he wants things to go. He's barely hanging in there. Will get topped up, but it was a close run thing. But this is it. Houston Outlaws, they've got the barrage. EMP, dragon. And now hooks down. Go for it. Let's get in the fight. You could just take it to Ben Best right now, too, if you wanted. Yeah, you blast the shield. shield. Yeah. There's the dragon. Yeah. Oh, that was so sick from Jake. Dante finds the kill, but he uses the. He tries to knock Ben Best into the dragon. Little details. Little details, Hex. Gets, yeah. gets excited. These Sonic arrows have been great, too, to try to set up a good barrage and EMP. Information is key, knowing where the other team is. Red Best is just having a really rough time. Eh, welcome to playing main tank in Overwatch. Uh, you are not the master of your own domain as main tank. You just get knocked around and abused a lot of the time. That's why they give you such good ultimates so you can feel good while playing it. about something? <laughs> please, please. Momo hooks again. These hooks have been really good for Miko. Oh. oh, that's not where you want to be, Gray. Gray gets hacked again. This is brutal. So far, the defense really coming together now from Houston. They're looking so good on Dorado. The defense, as far as far as concerned, has worked perfectly. Jake is bringing the damage this time. Now they're just at spawn. Just spawn camping now. Yes, this is tough. I mean, for Paris as well, when you're coming into it, if you've only got old Houston Outlaws on this map to go off of, making the prep happen so that you're yeah. effective, you're coming into this, you're just kind of crossing your fingers, hoping that you'll be able to perform on the day versus Houston Outlaws, because it's a mystery. First needs to decide what they're going to EMP, because it's almost impossible to get everybody here. Do you want to focus on the combo of the Fur and Mercy in the sky? Or do you want to hit someone on the ground? A lot of sustain with that Roadhog, and Jake goes down to a Fire Strike. Barrage. Oh, Barrage. Barrage, hey, that is so beautiful. And then it can also be just... Yeah, the ugliest thing ever. You almost never hear the end of the voice line. I know that justice sure. reigns, but from where? From where, August? From Eternally where? Eternally hacked <laughs> everywhere. Well, sound barrier in, the dragon onto the payload. Throwing some ults into this fight, Houston, and that's gonna cut Finzi off from the rest of his team and lead to an early death. Uh, he used D-Mech, but he take a lot of dragon damage. Didn't have to. Donnie's in trouble, though, after the EMP. Oh, there it is. That's the proper one, right on the payload. Nowhere to go. Jake is even there, somehow, magically. Oh, Gray is gonna be out of this. Surely, yep. Point blank rockets to the face, and that's overtime, and that's it, done! Finzi with the self-destruct, but that is just a parting shot. Houston Outlaws. A single point picked up for Paris on the offense. Houston, well, giving them the same treatment as they got on Hollywood. There you go. Match point for the Houston Outlaws. It seems like playing their comfort heroes has forced other teams into playing heroes they're not comfortable on. It does seem like Gray does not enjoy playing Moira in this composition. He's getting hacked constantly. He's getting barraged all the time. I don't think he got a single coalescence off. Full duration. No. Dante was on top of him every time. It's so vulnerable. Yes, it gives you the escape ability that Sen doesn't provide, but I mean, that ult can shut down so easily. Nico hit about 50% of his hooks, but it wasn't enough to really deter Jake from really being ultra aggressive with those barrages. And yeah, this is not the composition we're used to seeing Paris run, but it's what they're forced into running by Houston playing, you know, pretty much their best heroes. I'm not really enjoying it. Nico's nodding along with you, Hex. It's like, I totally agree, man. No, no, Rough time. I hear it. I'm trying to do my best here, Hex, please. <laughs> Just trying to do my best. It's all we can ask you, Nico. <laughs> Paris, let's see. Uh, as far as the defense. All right, so this is a 3-3 variation where you run the Winston on defense. You have an Ana as well. But I, I do just wonder if they run a forest still, the skybox is big enough that Winston can't be ultra effective against it. Dive tanks are good on Dorado. And it's also nice to jump into a forest airspace, if you will. But it's more effective just a shooter. And nothing they have really shoots her. Usually that's a, that's a pretty effective means of bringing yeah. an end to things. To shoot him. And it's so much pressure on Gray to maybe try to hit some shots onto her, but then you're not putting the healing down. And they see it right away. They're going to run a Farah. Yeah. And stay on that rooftop. Get out. Free ground covered here. And they're going to speed it up as much as possible with three on the payload. Tip top, perfect play coming in here from Houston Outlaws to kick things off. Paris Eternal right now. They've gathered up and they've just decided we're going to be taking the fight at the arch. 
Ah, they're just gonna back up, make this rotation. A lot of teams will lose just based on a sloppy rotation, so if you know that it's not your strength and you just rotate before it becomes an issue, that's exactly what they're gonna do. See if they can find an isolated target for a tank to jump on, but you see, this is not enough damage. Now when you have a pocket mercy. Oh, and Muma, oh, that would have been a sick sleep, but he's gonna be able to roll his way out. Okay. Not there. You gotta be careful, he will survive, gets topped up. Are they gonna make their way through? Sick Bionade onto Jake and Muma. Muma and Jake both very low. Rock is fighting back though. Finzi getting overwhelmed. Yeah, but they both live, and now they're gonna try to isolate this Brigida here too. It's just not the breakpoint damage they need to be able to deal with this Farah. Oh, Nanaboos comes in onto uh, who was it? They got it, Benbest, it looks like. Yeah, got Rockus and Dante on this fight too, so this defense should stabilize here. See Benbest not even gonna try to get that jump on out there. I like it though. And that gave a whole lot of ult charge over to the Houston Outlaws backline. In fact, the Jake and Muma, they both survive. Yep. They're getting topped up again. Rockus and Boink both gonna have their ults in this next fight. It's gonna get dicey for Paris. If Danya could get that EMP online for the next one, that would be big, but Dante, he's right on top of it. Woo! best just barely sneaks it. Uh, Jake got Cruz though, that is so much healing now down out of the fight. It's just Grey up who can heal this team because the Brigida is not gonna find a whole lot of targets. They're not uh, fighting on the ground too much. Crazy go on to instant, instant, instant. Oh, perfect play from Finzi! Sets it up, Finzi with the D Matrix still. Two kills coming through for the Houston Outlaws. It might not be good enough in the end. It looked so magical, it looked so perfect. Uh, they bring Jake back to life too, so the barrage does not go their way. They can even save this EMP very likely, knowing that there's not another EMP coming out from the other side. Houston pushes it through. So good. Now there's links you're finding. Finzi, you're gonna lose Ben Best, and that is gonna be the first point picked up for Houston Outlaws. Decent amount of time yeah. on the clock for them as well. I, I mean, this reminds me of like ladder games. Let's play Far Mercy until the other team says proves they can deal with it. Paris right now has not proven they can deal with Far Mercy at all. There's been almost no pressure. The few kills they are getting are getting resurrected, so they're not even pressuring down the Mercy in resurrection animations. And there you see green box of victory on the ground. They've got an EMP to set it up. And this has been all Houston Outlaws in Dorado. Spicy times, the primal here from Ben Best. He is managing to at least split them off, but they're sticking together. That four-man core right now for Houston Outlaws doing a good job of working together to stay alive. Look at Hacked, he gets nothing out of the primal eventually. Ben Best very low, but you know, Dante's just gonna bail. Oh, that was the best time bubble ever. Keeps him alive somehow. We lose Muma, squeak of despair, and he's gone. Back to spawn with him. Uh, this could have been a great barrage, but they might just reset now, too. Yeah, they will. They've lost a couple, so Houston has to go back to the drawing board. Jake will get out with his life, but they've got all the setup that they want. Linkser's going to go over to the Brigida here. Hanzo loses a little bit of value on this point. Nicely done. Putting him out of position. Vinci there with the D-Matrix, though. I do like Jake trying to measure his rockets, at least. Not just constantly throw them out, because that's just free ult charge. It'd be very hard for him to get kills there in that position. I mean, he's already got his barrage, so it's not like he needs to be doing damage for funsies, right? No, chip damage is uh, one of those things you really have to think about when you're in this situation. Great drag and stuff. EMPs all over the place. Two big kills going through to kick things off. Point blank, Rockets looking for the melee. Not gonna get it, Jake. Heartbreaking. Look at this resume. It it's gonna matter. be boink. It's gonna be boink. Battle, battle. Oh no, wait, he's in biz. Yeah, Dante went in biz there. I don't think it's going to matter. The minefield does drop Finzi as well. And coasting, nearing victory. Oh, <laughs> so sick. That's how you do it, Jake. That's a zoning barrage. That's a zoning barrage. Nobody getting on this point. No contest allowed. Got to hear the end of the voice line finally. Houston continues their tear through stage three, adding up the wins. Season playoffs are not out of sight for the outlaws here. And I just, look, it's, it's not about trying to be right, but it's like playing your comfort heroes. Other teams have not practiced against this any time recently. So now you play the Fire Mercy, it's up to you to beat us. We're gonna play our game. You have to adjust to us. We're not playing your 3-3 anymore. I'm done with it. Clearly a bit of work to do be done here for the Parish. Eternal, they've tried to get the work done. They've tried to get that progress. You see them closing the gap with the top of the league. But still, yeah. Houston Outlaws right now, just sticking to your own game. Yeah, someone, said, someone said, are they a top five team? Let's pull the reins back a little bit on that horse uh, just yeah, yet. Yeah. Let's see them against much stronger competition. But look, all you can do is beat the teams on your schedule. And they're beating the mid-pack teams that are on their schedule.
All right, we've got Emily ready for an interview with Rockus. We'll hand it over to them. Thanks, guys. I'm down here with Rockus. Congratulations on your win, and also a happy belated birthday. You just celebrate your 25th. Thank you so much. So this has been your third win, and you guys are on your way to securing that spot for the stage playoffs for the first time this season. So how, what would that mean to you? It probably mean a lot considering we had such a bad stage last stage. Um, we we're working so hard. I don't know if a lot of people know that. I mean, I guess you can see it, right, from results. But the biggest thing we're focusing on is not getting overconfident because it's so easy to lose games, so easy to choke, and we're, we're sick of choking in Matt Fives and the stuff. We're just going to keep focusing on what we're doing and hopefully, you know, it translates into uh, playoffs. Absolutely. Now, during halftime, we heard that you saw Zoe lint rolling herself, and uh, maybe you have this obsession or you're just a huge fan of lint rollers. Is that true? No, I have two Huskies, so they shed so much, and I can't wear any black clothes because it's just white fur everywhere. Well, because we're so generous here at the Overwatch League, we got you a personal lint roller. Thank you so much. <laughs> wow. So, yeah, during halftime, he saw us getting lint rolled, and he, you seemed rather jealous that this is not happening to yeah. you, so I'm helping you out here. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much, Zoe. Thank you, Rockus, and thank you guys. So I'm Lauren Hex, back to you guys. Now I get it. I get it. That's why Houston Outlaw struggled. Rockus was just distracted the he entire time. Yeah. He was linty. He's like, I can't focus with this, this, this stuff all over me. I had a Husky once. It was the dumbest dog God ever put on this planet. <laughs> it really was dumb, but cute as a butt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's take a look at stage three standings. And, uh, you know, also, that would have been the perfect time to bring up pictures of Huskies, but not happening. Sorry. Stage three standings, there you go. This is how it falls. The Outlaws, Hex, they've cracked it. They're in the top eight. Yeah, seven, three, and one. Look, that one loss was against New York as well, and it was kind of close. And it was just the debut of the New York Sombra that kind of threw them off a little bit. But my goodness, what a change it has been since the first half of the season into the second half. Look, they're probably going to make the stage playoffs at the very least, but if I'm Houston, I'm looking at that long con. Can we sneak in? If you get in at the 12th seed and you're playing hot, all you got to do is get a get a you know, invite to the party. Then who knows what happens? Exactly. It's not always the best team that wins championships. It's sometimes the hottest team. There you have it, Hex. Nailed it right there. But let's go ahead and take a look at our player of the match, owned by HP. And this is fun. We haven't had this in a bit. It Jake. May, uh, Jake makes the cut. It may be Omen by HP, but it's Jake from State Farm who is our player of the match here. Look, just hit barrage after barrage. And this is the kind of like composition you dream of as a bar. Oh, no one's gonna shoot me ever? Oh, my biggest run on the ground is an Ana, so I just can't take three shots in a row? Like, he absolutely crushed. Look, there's no doubting the mechanical talent on some of these directs. He knows when to be aggressive. He knows when to get back. And he, he's always giving Boink an L. Boink never really got caught out of position. How many damage dealer like players on other teams right now are just looking at Houston Outlaws so dead jealous. It's like, I wish I could play the game too. <laughs> just bringing coaches tape. <laughs> like all the Brigida players are just bringing coaches tape. Like, <laughs> it works on this match. Put me in coach. <laughs> exactly. They're <laughs> like, please let me play the game. <laughs> oh, well, there we go. Houston, they win it 3-1 over the Paris Eternal. Paris, they put up a fine mm -hmm. bit more work for them to do though. We're not done here with the day at the Blizzard Arena. We've got the Hongzhou Spark versus the Dallas Fuel coming right up after this. The Overwatch League is brought to you by Toyota, official North American partner of the Overwatch League. Toyota, let's go places. Hey man, what's up? You need anything for today? Nah man, I think I'm set. Big day today, man? Yeah, huge. Let's play some Overwatch. 